Welcome to Scrapping with Sherry. I wanted to show you a page idea today that's kind of been rolling around in my head for the last several days. And this is a great page that you could do with scraps. I'm not actually using scraps today because I'm using the Welcome Home Designer Paper Pack. Now this paper pack was on sale through Creative Memories in July of 2023. And so I loaded up on several of them because I love the colors in this. They are perfect for outdoors. They are perfect, just muted, neutral colors that I really enjoy. So I loaded up on it. Now I do have a few scraps of it and I've gone ahead and pulled those and I'll start with those, but I'm not gonna limit myself to them. And I'm gonna be using my 12 inch trimmer and my repositionable tape. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is choose a pattern out of that pack that brings in all of my different colors. And I chose this with these tiny little flowers on it, and it brings in brown, white, green, blue. I like the fact that it pulls in all the colors. And then I've chosen pieces of paper that coordinate well with those colors. They're all in there already but this pattern is going to be what ties it all together. Now, you can tell that most of them are pretty subdued in their patterns. They do have some pattern to them, but it's not a bold pattern. This one is a little more bold, and I'm not sure how it's gonna play out, but we're gonna try it and see anyway. So the pattern that I'm using to tie it all together is the one I'm going to work with first. And for this, I'm gonna need my trimmer and a couple of binder clips. Now, you don't have to use the binder clips, but for me, this makes things a lot easier. Now, I use little bitty binder clips to do this technique. You can use a lot of different sizes, but the smaller ones seem to work better to, um, to stop your trimmer at the spot you wanna stop it at, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So, our trimmer blade housing has this line right here and that shows you where the cut actually is going to occur. I'm going to slide that blade housing down to this one and a half inch mark on my trimmer and I'm hoping that you can see that. This is the one and a half inch line and then I'm going to put this little clip right there because when I'm cutting I want that blade to stop at the one and a half inch mark every time. I don't want to have to look at the measurements and, and check it all out every time. So, one and a half inches down there. So, this would go to 12 here, which would be a full length sheet of paper. So, our one and a half is going to be at 10 and a half down here. So, I'm going to move that blade housing until it's sitting at that 10 and a half inch line and do the same thing. I'm going to put my binder clip at this end of it to stop the blade from going past that 10 and a half inch mark. And we're doing that because we're going to make a frame for this particular page layout. So, because I have these at one and a half, I'm gonna go to one and a half on my trimmer as well when I slide my paper in. So I'm sliding my paper to the one and a half mark and I cut from binder clip to binder clip. See, it's kept it from going all the way to the edge. I'm gonna turn and go to one and a half again on this side of my trimmer and go from one and a half to one and a half. And sometimes you'll have a little edge right there that doesn't quite catch. It's okay, it's really easy to snip that. And I just keep lining up one and a half to one and a half all the way around. All right, so I've gotten this cut and you can tell it's just, there's a little edge there. It's okay, it's not a big deal. That just means I didn't get my clips placed quite far enough out for the blade to catch all the way. And you can see I'm just popping these loose with my fingers. I mean, you could be a lot more precise. You could get your scissors out and you could measure and take care of it. And they, there is a little edge right here that I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit. All right, so we have a frame. Now that frame is done and we are going to lay that to the side so we don't mess it up in the course of the rest of this cutting. Now I'm gonna pull my trimmer back over and I'm gonna take off the binder clips because now I'm gonna use the rest of this paper and I'm gonna cut it into one inch strips. So just a lot of one inch strips for this. 
And this is the part that's gonna take a little time, but I do think the effect is gonna be worth it. At least I hope so. Now again, if you have scraps, this I think would be a great opportunity to use scraps. You just need to make sure that you have one tying in pattern, one pattern that's gonna pull all the other colors together once you start laying it all out. So I've got all those strips cut, they're all one inch. And I'm not gonna need all of these for this design, I can tell you that right now, but I'll use them on something else, I am sure. Now with this one, you know, I told you I'm not sure how this pattern is going to work, but I am gonna put the pattern um, horizontally as I cut it. And this one I'm gonna cut at a three quarter inch. Now there's no rhyme nor reason to these measurements. I just don't want this pattern to be quite a standout. And I'm gonna cut about five of these. I'm cutting this pattern at a three quarter inch because it's pretty, I, I won't say bold, but it's a pretty noticeable pattern and I don't necessarily want it to stand out on the page. I just really want to bring in a little green with this pattern. So I've got those. I've got this other pattern that I cut at one inch and we're gonna set that paper to the side. Now I'm pulling in this blue. I love this dark blue that's out of that pack as well. And it's gonna bring in a little bit deeper color, although the dark blue is not in here, it coordinates because it's all part of that pack. And you can tell, I don't have a lot of space here to do full length, but that's okay, because we're not necessarily gonna need full length on all of these. Now this blue, because I love blue like I do, I'm going to one and a half on this blue and I'm gonna make some wider cuts with this. And, you know, I told you I haven't played with this idea yet. It just keeps rolling around in my head, but I'm thinking you could probably even do different cuts of the same color. I'm just not doing that. I don't know why. For me, it just seems to make sense to do them all the same. So I've got a bunch of one and a half, and I do have this little leftover piece if I need that. I've got my brown. I do like this brown, and I like the fact that it's almost solid. I call them semi-solids. I'm gonna cut this brown at half inch. Not done any half inch yet. And it's a little bitty strip, and that's your first line to the right of your cutting mat, the first real line. What do you think about this Welcome Home paper pack? I have used it for so many different events. It was perfect for my son's wedding, particularly because it was an outside wedding. Um, the blues matched the suits very well. The greens picked up the grass and then the, the soft little flowers were perfect. I've used it for lots of outdoor occasions. I've used it for a lot of our travels where um, we've been outdoors hiking because the colors are just so great for that. All right, and one last pattern. And this is my only really brighter pattern. I'm gonna go on one inch on this one. All the rest are a little more subdued, but we're gonna bring in a little light with this. So I'm cutting one inch with this. And I'm gonna do about five pieces of this. I'm not sure you're gonna need that many. And if you're playing with scraps, you could figure it out kind of as you go. But I wanna get all the cutting done before I start laying it all out. All right, and I cut one inch of those. So we still have some extra papers if we need them, but let's move the trimmer. And we're gonna build this page on our cover sheet. You know how I'm about cover sheets. So we're gonna build the page onto the cover sheet from Welcome Home. And I'm gonna turn the name of that upside down. So when I teach this technique to my customers, if they ask me what paper pack I used, it's easy enough to flip to the back and say, oh, that was Welcome Home, and here are the papers that are in that particular pack. So now comes the hardest part, I think. I thought the rest was pretty easy, although the, the frame sometimes is a little daunting to people. But I'm going to start by making a diagonal stripe right through the middle of this page. Now, you see I've got a, a bleepy here, and I've got a bad spot here, but I can piece these and it's fine. And what I wanna do on this is just piece them in a way that the center is not real obvious. Remember, our outside edges are not necessarily gonna matter here. 
And I am using repositionable tape just in case I get things all crazy and wonky. I tend to have an, a way of doing that sometimes. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you're perfectly even corner to corner on this particular thing because nobody's ever gonna know the difference. How cool is that? I was watching a lady last night and she said, it's good when we're doing our videos and teaching um, online classes that we mess up every so often so we can show people how to fix the mess ups. Now that blue is gonna be right through the center. So that is gonna be pretty bold. I think I wanna put this little pattern beside it because it's a little bit lighter. That's a good contrast right there. And you can see I've got a little edge right there, or maybe you can't see, which would be even better. But there's a little edge right there where my cuts are not exactly the same. So I'm gonna try to use this to cover it up, but I'm not overly concerned about it just because I feel like a picture will be there in the middle anyway. And I am just butting that right up against that blue one. And we are gonna need just a touch more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my repo tape right there on the cover sheet. Now I'm gonna tear this off because that's way too much to leave hanging off that edge right there. You notice I'm not going all the way to the edge because that's gonna be covered in a few minutes anyway. So we've got a, a darker, a lighter. Let's go with another darker. This is our little um, brown strip. And I'm really not necessarily worried so much about the pattern choices as I am the contrast in colors. If I put all the lighter ones together, they're not gonna pop quite so much. And I do want some pop on this. I'm gonna go back and put my floral in now. Now remember, my floral is also gonna be my frame. So I don't want a ton of floral, but I do want a little bit of it. And I am gonna go ahead and piece that because that's not gonna go all the way to the edge. And again, I'm just tearing a piece of that. That floral is so busy. I don't think you're even gonna see where those are pieced. All right. And the floral has a little depth to it. So I think we're gonna go lighter and do this light brown dotted right beside it. Now you may be wondering why I'm not using the back sides of some of these. I don't want a ton of really busy prints on this because I think that will detract from the look of it. And in fact, I think you could probably do this with cardstock if you wanted to. Um, it would make your page a lot heavier because the cardstock would be heavy but I think you could do it with different cardstock solid colors and it would be pretty as well. So I think at this point we have used all of the different patterns. One, two, three, four, five. There's no um, magic number in using the five patterns. I just chose those because I wanted to bring out the blues, the greens, and the browns, and I used my floral to tie them together. And I'm just using some leftover pieces here. Oh look, that piece is a blue, but it's a little skinnier. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna pull in, and I'm using scraps that I've laid over here to the side to do some of these shorter pieces. And I'm continuing the pattern at this point. I'm making it all the same. And for this one, I'm just gonna run my repo tape on there. Oh y'all, I'm out of tape again. Remember I mentioned to you last time, or on one of the videos, that when you, refill your repo tape, you wanna check right here because occasionally tape gets gunked right in this little corner right here. And you wanna get that out before you put in your new repo or it can cause your tape to kinda of catch and um, malfunction a little bit. So repo tape right there on that. And I'm just gonna slide this little strip in. I'm gonna tear it because we can use that again. We're going back with you know what, I don't really want this flower right up against where that whole border is gonna be. So I think I'm gonna skip the flower there and put this in. That'll give me some contrast with my border. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. I'm gonna check that and make sure that we are good on that corner. Oh yeah. 
if I had put my, my flower there, I would have ended up with a whole big flowery section right there that I don't really want. And you can tell I could have taken off parts of that and used them elsewhere, but I'm liking the look of that. All right, so we've got our blue here, our green. I don't really want to go backwards with it necessarily, or do I? We could make the pattern go this way. I'm thinking I want to go a little bit different though. I think I want to put the flower up against this blue because I think that's going to make that flower show up really well. I want to keep it away from this outside edge where everything's going to meet up. So another piece of blue here. And I'm not really majoring on the blue in the inside design specifically because it's going to be so heavy on the outside or the blue flower. That's what I mean. I'm not putting tons of blue flower through the middle because the frame has all that blue floral. All right, let's go back with something a little more solid looking like this brown right here. I do like the difference in the widths of the strips. I like having a wider and a more narrow. And because that one was very solid, let's pull this green pattern back out. Now, if you're looking at my pile over here to the right, you're seeing that I'm not really going through a lot of these. So I didn't really need this much paper necessarily, but you'll see why I went ahead and did several. And, you know, we gotta have a matching page. It's always important to me to have a matching page. So we'll figure out what we're gonna do for our coordinating page in just a minute. I wanted the width here. The one we haven't used yet is this nice little white. And I'm gonna see if that, yep, that will fit there perfectly. I don't wanna go back with the floral again. So the brown would be a good option next to that. And yeah, I'm getting some of that repositionable tape in different places. I can feel it on my mat. I could be going back to my little silicone mat over here and using it, but I'm covering up so much of this space. I'm not overly concerned about getting a little of that tape here and there. You'll see when I start creating, I just, I kind of go willy nilly sometimes, I think. I'm just so excited about the look of it. I forget to use all of my tools. Now let's check that corner and see if we're covered. And we are. So we're gonna stop right there. Now we're gonna pull our trimmer back out and just take off all those excess pieces at this point. And that's gonna be a little hard to do. It's gonna be a little hard to get it in your trimmer, but just do the best you can to get that cover sheet lined up on your cutting line. I got a really long piece right there. And I do prefer to wait till the end to do that and just make all of these cuts at one time. And I've got all these little pieces that stick to my trimmer. It's okay. I think I've told you before, you can clean your trimmer off with um, alcohol wipes. They work really well for this. Don't buy the big package of alcohol wipes that look like they're in a baby wipe box. In my experience, that has not worked well because they dry out quickly. I buy the little individual packages of alcohol wipes that are sealed up and you can just use one at a time and they last forever. Oops, didn't cut through all the way right there. All right. Are you excited to see the finished product? I am. Now let's add our tape on the back of our frame. Look at that. That's even really pretty, isn't it? And when I start laying this out, I choose one co corner, go ahead and put it down on that corner, and then just work from there, being sure I'm covering up that white cover sheet. And when you just kind of let it fall, it falls into place. All right, so we've got that all done, but I'll tell you the part I'm not liking right now is that there's just not any contrast here, and that kind of bothers me. So let's see what we could do by adding some brown strips right around that. You could also use your border maker system or um, a border punch if you wanted to get really fancy with it. But I think I like boxing this in with my brown strips. Now, I have exactly enough of those left. How convenient is that? 
I do like the look of that. So let's cut these brown strips down. Now, um, let's check the length of those. They should be a 12 inch length. So all we've got to do is cut off an inch and a half. And I say that because we made that frame an inch and a half to begin with, correct? Y'all know I'm an eyeballer, I don't always measure correctly. But I am gonna need a touch of an overlap. So we probably want to make that come out to about right there. 12 inch ruler. <laughs> I still just wanna eyeball it, y'all. I could think about all the measurements. You know, some of the people in our company are so fantastic with doing measurements. I am just not one of those people. I'm just very much an eyeballer. So let me cut this, see if it works, and then I'll tell you what this measurement was. How's that? So for the top and the bottom one, our little strip is going to be about nine and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and do a top one at nine and a half. And I think our side one may need to be just a touch longer to cover up those edges. And I'm not putting this inside the frame because I don't want to make this inside space any smaller. I'm going to put it right on the edge of my frame. And yeah, I could probably have made the frame thinner, but a thinner frame is just a little bit harder to work with. And I really do like the contrast of putting this on now. So this, I want to make sure it goes from the top all the way to the bottom here. And I'm just going to fingernail that a little bit and put it in and cut, and then I'll measure that for you. This one is nine and seven eighths. How's that for exact? Nine and seven eighths, and that's gonna go top to bottom of those little strips we just cut. And I'm gonna do one more at nine and seven eighths, and then we'll tape these down. And I am gonna put these small strips on my mat over here, just so I don't get tape all over everything again. Now, because I cut them different sizes, it's important that I keep the top and bottom ones the same as I cut them. And I'm sticking this right up against the bottom of the frame there, or the top of the frame, depending on how you're looking at it. And I'm gonna do top and bottom first, and then I'll go back and do the two sides because they are gonna overlap these and cover up. All right. We almost have this layout finished. We just have to figure out a coordinating two page for it. Now, how would I use this page? Um, you know, it's got a lot going on and a lot of color, a lot of this, a lot of that, a lot of pattern to it. But I'm thinking that this is a good title page for an album. Then you wouldn't have to make a coordinating page. It's a good page to showcase a one picture kind of thing. Like if you had a beautiful picture of um, an outdoor space and you wanted to develop that even in a five by seven to put here, let's look at Matt. Because I used the, that brown around the outside edge, I think I would go back and matte with that brown as well. I'm just gonna make sure this scrap is evened up and it's a little more than four inches. It's actually closer to four and a half, but I'm gonna leave it for right now and I'm just gonna cut this at six inches. And yes, my pictures would be six inches, but I can always cut down just a hair on them to um, make that work. And I hate to waste any of that paper. So I could do a couple of pictures in there like this. I could cut down some top to bottom and leave my big side here. You know, we want to keep some of this pattern showing. So one picture would be awesome. A couple of pictures even overlapped would be pretty and you can still see a lot of that pattern. But this is something you would want to play with when you get your pictures. And of course, I don't know which pictures I'm gonna use for this. So that's our one page. Let's look at how we can make a coordinating page that will allow us to put a lot more pictures on this double spread. All right, so I'm going to slide this one to the side. I do like the look of that. I hope you do too. I'm just seeing that um, this is a really pretty look. Just very different and a great way to use scraps if I had had them to use with this particular color. 
the reason I know these colors are going to be good for me is we're going to start traveling again. And when we travel, we do a lot of outdoorsy things. So that would be one side of my layout. The other side needs to kind of mirror that without being the same matchy-matchy. I'm not about the the matchy-matchy, especially when it's something that's that busy to start with. So we've got more strips of the colors that we had used. Not a lot, but we've got some. The only thing that I don't currently have is that brown because we used it all up. So let me pull some more brown. I do like the color of that. It's such a rich color. And this part may freak you out just a little bit, but don't let it. It's okay. This I promise you this is going to be okay. I am pulling a scrap of cardstock. It doesn't match this, but that's okay. It doesn't have to match this. This particular scrap is about, it's a little over two inches wide. I'm going to cut it down to two inches because I don't want to border any wider than two inches anyway. This is going to be my base for building on for our next part. So I've got this little scrap that's two inches. And remember I'd run out of the brown and we had cut the brown at a half an inch earlier. So I'm just gonna cut one little strip of brown here. And then we're gonna go ahead and build our border for our second page. Now in doing that, we are gonna make all of our strips go this way this time. And I had a little piece of brown left that just happens to be exactly wide enough. Well, not exactly, but it's plenty wide enough, let's say that. And I'm not gonna try to mirror that diagonal effect over here. You could, and I'm sure it would be lovely, but I'm just gonna go straight on these. And again, I'm just trying to make sure that my colors are um, standing out because I'm not putting heavy prints by heavy prints. I'm trying to make sure that um, the prints are coordinating well with each other and not taking away from the print beside it. And I say prints just because all of these have a little bit of texture to them. None of these are solid colors like our card stocks. I'm gonna go back with a lighter because we have that dark, dark right there. Okay, and we need to get our green in there. I don't necessarily want the green up against this. So I'm gonna do another little piece of brown. There's another little piece of it laying there. And then I will do that green next to that. Now, if that first page is too busy for you, there are a lot of different ways you could play with it. And I'm just thinking right off the top of my head while I'm looking at it as I'm working. But what about if you cut that diagonally and used it on two different pages? You could do that. Again, I feel certain for me, it's gonna be a page to make a standout picture really stand out. I'm just, I keep looking at it thinking, I really like the look of that. And with a few embellishments in the corner, I think this would be a gorgeous page for one of those standout photos that we, we sometimes take. All right, so I've got that green in there. I don't necessarily want to go back with my brown so quickly. So let's pull a little of this wider blue again. I am gonna put a little more of this floral pattern this time because we're, we don't have that giant frame to contend with. So I do want this blue in there to show how everything coordinates with that. Although I used to be a kindergarten teacher, you can tell I'm not really um, doing this pattern correctly. If I were teaching kindergarten or tutoring some of my tutor students, they would be saying, Miss Tilly, that is not right. You don't do patterns that way. And they would be absolutely correct. But for artistic purposes, it works. I don't like that there, so I think I'm gonna go back with my blue again. Now my blue is really wide, so it really stands out. And you can see, I don't really have a straight edge on some of these, so I'm going ahead and putting them over both sides. And then we'll trim that off in just a second. So what do we need now? We haven't done this lighter color. And then we've got just a tiny little spot, which looks like a perfect spot for one more brown. So I didn't even need that strip I cut, but it's okay. I'm sure I can use it on something else later. And then we need to pull our trimmer back in. 
I'm gonna flip this so I can see. Now I do have a straight edge on one end of this border, which helps me to line that up on my cutting guide. Now, will I keep all of these strips? Absolutely not. I do not um, put a lot of small scraps into my scrap bag because I have found over the years that if I do, they end up getting smashed to the bottom and they're ruined by the time I decide I wanna use them anyway. So it's just not worth it to me to try to save tiny, tiny little scraps. And I'm feeling like this may be a little off and I don't know if it's just my depth perception today or what, but it feels like it's not quite even. So I've cut through several thicknesses there and you probably can't see this, but a lot of this is sticking to my little trimmer blade because it had repo tape on it. But now we've got this side border. Now, what can we do with this to make this look like a good cohesive page? Let's pull some of the colors we had played with earlier and just see what we end up with. Now, if we go with the brown, remember I'd cut off a little strip so the brown's not full length. I could do that. And then to make my flower stand out, I could add a floral border right here. Just using these leftover strips. Told you I would use those. That's not bad. This side looks a little bit brighter to me, but if we did something like this, we could always mat with this. Let's check the width of that. I bet it's at least six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's actually more like seven inches. So we could add that stripe down through there to brighten it up. So we could go that way with it. We could piece these two pieces together and do this and go back with the blue. I don't know that I necessarily want to add this green stripe in because I've got the stripe going on already. If we went this direction, we could go back with this little brown piece and just border that up. Or what if we made it look more like this and we did that brown border, but then also a blue strip. So you see there are lots of different options there. I'm actually thinking what I like is taking this brown out, doing this blue here, and then adding this in to brighten it up, which would be a perfect place for matting photos. Now I could always pull some more brown later and I could mat photos with the brown. I could pull some of the, um, blues out of there. Lots of different things. But I am going to go ahead and finish this page out so that I will have it when I come back from my next travels. So because this doesn't go all the way to the edge, and I don't want to use a whole cover sheet to try to line this up, here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to use my regular tape runner, and I'm going to run it right down the edge of this. And I'm using a pretty good bit because I don't want this to fall apart. But I've got it lined up on my 13 inch mat. So you can see I'm right on the line here. I'm on the lines top to bottom. And I know that this is the outside edge of my page where this outside darker line is. So I'm just gonna put my border up against the edge of that outside line and then pop it down. There's a piece of tape showing right there. But this makes a 12 inch page without having to do all the welding, all that kind of stuff. And you can see my blue border is showing on the back side. That's fine unless you're doing the slide in pockets, in which case you would need to add something behind there. But we are gonna go back and close in that border with our flower that we were working with. And that is regular tape. I thought I grabbed my repo, but hey, it works. And I'm just bordering that up. Let's do the repo this time. And if you see me flipping it around, it's because occasionally my cuts are just a little bit off to one end or the other. And I want this to match up here because I don't want there to be any gaps in the way this border fits up against, the way the flower border fits up against that. Now that's paced, and unless you know it, you would never be able to tell it. That's the beauty of a really um, busy print like that little flower 
is that you're not going to be able to see where anything is pasted. I'm going to cut that little strip off. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this on. If I don't, I'll probably use it on something else later. And then I'll wish I had one more little piece of that. Now, even um, to add some different color in here, if I didn't have more pieces of this Welcome Home paper, I could use navy, which would make some beautiful mats, and it would pull out this darker blue here. I could use the um, hot fudge cardstock to do the matting. A lot of different options for matting right there. But these two pages are finished today. Yeah, I know it took a little time, but I think the effect is really pretty. And I like stripes anyway, so this makes me really happy. I hope you enjoyed this page idea. I hope you'll give it a try. Let me know if you try it with any collections because I might want to go back and try it again with different collections. But until next time, happy scrapping. Hey y'all, I wanted to give you a quick tip on binder clips. I use those sometimes to hold a space when I want to just cut a certain area on my trimmer but I found that I was forever losing my little binder clips and I couldn't keep up with them. So I added a really strong magnet on the back of my trimmer. It, I, I got this big heavy duty one and it fit right inside this little section in the back of the trimmer. And my binder clips magnet to that. So I always have my binder clips handy to use on the front of my trimmer. I have not had a problem with them falling out at all but I just used some E6000 glue and glued in that really strong magnet to hold my binder clips. Just a tip, if you love organization the way I do and you like having all the pieces for your trimmer right underneath.